Welcome everybody to Cowboy Church. We're, uh, this is a different situation for all of us throughout the world. We're doing Cowboy Church from home and I just pray that a lot of people see this and all the people that usually go to Chow Cowboy Church know to get on Paulette's Facebook and watch this or go to agf.org and watch this. So I just want to be thankful and I just want to thank Susan Brown for doing the worship for this and when I get to watch this recording, I will get to watch the worship too. That's going to be quite interesting because I haven't heard it already. So we're going to have some fun with this. And what we're going to do is right in the middle of this coronavirus, which has caused all this and put this and, and our world in the situation it is. And so we're going to kick that elephant in the room for a little bit and see if we can get it to move out and get to understand what we can do about it. And so it's going to be a little bit of a rough ride in the beginning, but just hang on. The lights will come on. And so I just wanted to have the introduction for this, and I just want to pray for Susan. I just want to pray for the anointing on her hands, and I want to pray for that God would bless her family and keep her safe. And we just pray that the worship would go up as a sweet-smelling offering to the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for us and him being God and Lord of our lives in Jesus' name.
Jesus as my Savior, you take him to. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him to. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him to. While he's calling you. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. I said do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. I said, Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, do remember me. Way beyond the blue. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sure worship was wonderful i'll get to watch it again as i said and i'm sure you probably noticed the different backgrounds because that just means we're not in the same place but we are together i believe in the spirit in in her and the holy spirit is with her wonderful lady and we thank you susan for your worship and so i want to get right into this here and this is quite new to me 
we're gonna have some fun with this. But I know a lot of you people out there are missing my wife's coffee and cookies. Sorry about all that. And I'm so hopeful that soon we'll get back together because we're all missing the fellowship. We're all missing the friendship. We're all missing the visiting. So let's pray again as we get into the word. We lift you up, holy God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to, and the technology, the ability to send your word out to people that can't go anywhere, or at least they're not supposed to be going anywhere. So we do thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. We thank you again for the, the people that are going to have their hands on this before it goes out. We thank you for Pastor Rob, Leah, for their editing and those that have suggested and, and gave us the abilities to do this. So we just lift you up, Father, and we give you this service. And we just hope that those that need to see this, see this. And those that need to hear this, get an answer from your word, from this. And that's it's just a simple message, but we believe it's a true message. We believe it's the message that we need for the time that we have right now. And so we lift it up to you and give you this service in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I'm sure you notice, um, I'm going to check my notes here every now and then, so I know I'm going to stutter around a little bit. Sometimes we have to address the darkness to find the light. You know, as I said, we're going to kick this elephant that's in the room, this coronavirus. And we're just going to say, right off the bat, I'm going to go right to John 3.14. Now, you have all know John 3.16. You've heard it. It's a famous verse. So I'm going to go to John 3.14. Right before that, Jesus himself says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And so I'm going to go right to that. And there's going to be kind of a go-back preaching through this whole thing. So I'm going to go back. And we're going to find out why he said that, why things are the way they are. And when we go back, a lot of times we can find out what we can do about it, why it's us, what is going on. So as we go back to that, there's two ways, as I've said before. When Jesus opens his mouth and talks, many times he covers the natural and the spiritual all in one statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to find out why he said that. So, let's go back to Numbers 21, verse 5, and we're just going to, a little go-back story on this. The children of Israel are in the wilderness. God is taking care of them. They have food falling from the sky. Their clothes are not wearing out. They have God to look at during the day in a pillar of smoke, and they have, in a, in a cloud, and then they have God to look at at night in a pillar of fire. He's with them. They're, like I said, everything is taken care of. Are they happy about that? Do they acknowledge that? Let's take a look. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. Now, do you think that made God happy? He was dropping bread out of the sky for them, the most nutritious food that probably was ever produced on earth because that's all they needed to have. They didn't fix a salad at a certain time and they didn't eat a steak at a certain time and they didn't have different things at certain times. They had that one thing and it was perfect and it fell out of the sky every morning except on the Sabbath day and the day before it fell out for enough for them to have for two days. It was awesome. That kind of ticked the Lord off for what they just said. They, they were complaining, murmuring, as God said. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. Does this sound a little bit familiar what might be going on? And many of the people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was. If a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. 
So like I said, Jesus speaks of the natural and the spiritual a lot of times in the same sentence. And do you notice a detail, what Jesus said? So must the Son of Man be lifted up. He put himself in our place. He put himself in our environment to be lifted up. And here we are in the, in the season of Easter, and in two weeks, a week and a half, I guess it is, in the season of Easter, that'd be in a week. But anyway, it's coming to where we celebrate him being lifted up on that pole. And then, of course, he rose again from the dead. Praise God for that. But physically, he had to be lifted up on that pole. He was one of us. He was in our world, and the people could look up on him. They could look up and see him. Spiritually, we're to look up to him at all times. So we're going to move on here. And I'm just going to say, did you notice? Now we're going to start talking about that coronavirus. Did you notice what happened when it was first brought about? People first started hearing about it and talking about it. Do you remember the fear of a couple of weeks ago? People just going to stores and buying this and grabbing that and toilet paper. If you're not buying food, folks, the toilet paper is really not an essential item. But anyway, I think most of you figured that out. I went to one of those stores one time and I was uh, walking through there. I was looking for tires. I wasn't looking for anything else. I just walked over there and there was nobody at the tire section in this big store, except for the guy behind the counter. And we got to visiting and he looks at me and goes, why the toilet paper? I don't get it. What do they need? Well, there was another guy behind the tires that was working there that was doing something and I didn't even know he was there. And he yells out and he goes, it's because it's big and fluffy and people want all the comfort. And they were all laughing, but you know, I thought, that guy might have, might have a little more knowledge than everybody else does. I said, that might be the ticket right there. So anyway, a lot of people have the extra toilet paper, so if you need some. But what I'm getting at is, did you notice first the fear? And then, did you notice what came after that? The goodness. People started gathering up stuff that they had and maybe taking it to their neighbors or calling their neighbors and saying, hey, if you don't have something, give me a call. Or if you catch this thing, if you get bit by this poison, call us. I'll bring dinner and I'll put it on your porch. I'll put it out in front of your house. I'll help you out. The goodness just started to flood all over the place from people. But first, the fear. Why is that? Let's go back and find out why that is. And what I want to do is I want to go back to Jeremiah 17:9. And just say, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now, if we stop right there, it just looks really dark because nobody can know it. It's deceitful above all things. That's the heart we're born with. That's the heart because we're born into sin. That's where we're born. But it gets better. As I said, the lights will come on. So get your horses marked out. Make sure you don't break the barrier. This ride's going to get easier as we go, and I'm going to prove to you how that is. So let's talk about that goodness that people started to show. And this is where we start kicking on that elephant, this coronavirus, because, you know, if we don't kick on him, he just lays there and stinks. So let's get him up, kick on him, and get him on out of here. It's that goodness that we have in us that showed up after the fear. That's actually, we could, we could look at that like a product and say, Here's this goodness. Where did it come from? Some people say, well, I'm just a good person. I felt like I needed to help that person. But think about it. And that's where we start going back. Because I want you to really start thinking, where did I get that? Where did I get that goodness? Did I learn that from my mom or my dad, grandpa, grandma, aunt, uncle, brother, sister? Because you had to get it from somewhere. You were not born with it. And they got it from somewhere. They were not born with it. And so ultimately, originally, where I'm trying to go with this, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time, we got this from God. We got this from the Lord Jesus. This goodness came from either the Word of God that somebody learned, and they got it from God, and they pass it on, and it just keeps going, and people think, well, I'm just a good person. 
This is where we start to acknowledge. This is where we start to look up at the one that's on the cross. And we start looking up at the one that's held up there that when we're bit, we can look at him and we can live because that goodness belongs to him. That's not our goodness. We borrow that from him. He gives that to us in different ways. And it has gone through different avenues at different times. And a lot of people have some and they don't know where it came from. They just think it's theirs. They just think it's good. So that's what I want to get in here today is just to say uh, that acknowledgement. We're looking for the acknowledgement, that goodness, as we look up on that one that has been lifted up. When we get bit, our world has been bit, and we need to look up at the one that's on that pole. We need to look up at the one that's on that cross. And so I'm about done here. I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time with this. But I just want to say if there's somebody out there that heard this or is is getting the ideas, just saying, I want to go back and find out because I thought that goodness was mine. I thought I was born with that. But no, you were not born with goodness. You were born with a deceitful heart. And so replace that deceitful heart with the goodness, but acknowledge. That's the whole point of this whole preaching here today is that acknowledgement to go back to find out where'd that goodness come from. And I sure thank my neighbors and I thank everybody else in the world for the goodness that is showing. But let's acknowledge where that goodness came from. Because some of you out there didn't even think of that, I'll bet. And I hope you're thinking back and going, well, my grandma or my dad or whatever. So let's acknowledge him because that's where it came from. And those of you that did, if you want to right now, and you just want to acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. If you're in your homes right now and your family's around or maybe everybody just heard this for the first time and it just, it kind of gave them that shock by that hot shot in the hip and just said, you know, we do need to look to the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to acknowledge him that maybe you'd get on your knees on the floor and just say, Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me. I acknowledge you now. I want to acknowledge who you are and what you did. I want to lift you up in my spirit and in my eyes and I want to live. Because even now, if we lift him up in our hearts and we acknowledge him as our Savior, you will live. Even if your body gets bit and dies here in the world, you will live. Your soul will live. Because you don't want your soul to not live. Because what it does, it does for eternity. If it lives, it'll live for eternity. If it dies, it'll die for eternity. But So let's look up to him. Let's lift him up. And I just want to say a little prayer here. So we just want to lift you up, Lord, and we want to say the prayer for those that have maybe given their heart to Christ by just listening to this. I pray that, that they find a church home or they find a friend that they know is a Christian and, and they have some fun learning more about you. And so I just want to wrap this up. I want to give the glory to God, and I want to encourage everybody to acknowledge Him to realize where the good things in your life all came from and to acknowledge him in Jesus' name. Amen.